Hello. I'm an old fart, and I have a guilty pleasure. I like knives. You're looking at one of a series of videos where I'm sharing a view into my collection of small fold folding pocket knives. I'm not an expert or an official representative of anyone or anything in any way. I just like knives. Today uh, we're going to look at this interesting little knife. This is a Zero Tolerance Model 0235, which is their modern slip joint knife. I found this at a swap table at an outdoor market a few years ago. I was quite surprised because I'd never heard of it. I'd heard of Zero Tolerance, of course. I mean, I'd never heard of this model, and, and in fact, I'd never really heard of the concept of the modernized slip joint. Now, this is what introduced me to that concept, and I found it quite intriguing. I said, oh yeah, I remember slip joint knives from my childhood. It actually got me reminiscing about the old jackknife I had as a Boy Scout some mumble mumble years ago. Uh, I don't have that knife anymore. I wonder whatever happened to it. But it looked something like this. The interesting thing I remember was that getting into Cubs and Scouts, there was an age limit, and, and up to a certain age, we weren't allowed to have folding knives, what they called jack knives. But we were allowed to have a fixed blade knife, which they called a sheath knife, because it hung in a sheath on your belt. And then once you reached a certain age, you graduated to where you were allowed to have what they called a clasp knife, by which they meant a slip joint knife, typically with two blades and usually with that simulated antler covering, which was kind of standard. In fact, the Scout store sold one with the Scout logo on it. I'm pretty sure that was the one I had. Anyway, finding this zero tolerance slip joint got me interested in exploring the genre of modern slip joints, and I will probably look at some of the others too. Maybe the Lion Steel Best Man, for example. Anyway, back to the present. Um, what is this thing? Well, it's a small knife, small and light, with carbon fiber scales. There is no blade deployment mechanism, no thumb stud, no flipper tab. Instead, it has a nail nick, and you open it two-handed by getting your thumbnail into the nick and pulling it open. Nothing fancy. And it doesn't lock open, so there is no mechanism to unlock it. You just fold it closed. I wasn't sure whether it would be correct to call it a slip joint, but zero tolerance does, so I will too. The reason I wasn't sure was it's not a traditional slip joint because it, it doesn't use a back spring for tension like this one does, for example. Opening this blade, you see this spring protruding from the back here. That's what's providing the tension and the detent, and that's what I thought slip joint meant. This knife doesn't use a back spring. Instead, there are side springs. Let's see if you can just see down in there. There's a metal liner on each side that has a bit of spring tension wanting to pinch inwards. One on each side, and each has a detent ball that matches detent uh, recesses in the blades. It's kind of like a liner lock without the lock. Uh, the detent system includes a stop at the halfway point in both directions. So when you're opening it, there we are, or closing it, it comes to quite a noticeable stop here at the halfway point. Then there are detents at the fully open and the fully closed positions as well. That half stop is a safety feature when closing because the knife will not slip closed all the way. It stops there. You have time to get your fingers out of the way and give the blade a little push to keep it going. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I have read that the fact that it doesn't lock makes it legal to carry in certain places. I think there are areas where locking knives are prohibited, but this being a non-locking knife is okay. Now, the other thing that makes it okay in some places is that the blade is fairly small at uh, 2.6 inches. It's well under the 3 inch threshold that some jurisdictions use to determine the legality of a knife. So in theory, this knife should be legal to carry in more locations. Did I mention that I'm not a lawyer? 
You know not to take legal advice from a stranger on YouTube, right? Check your own rules. Uh, speaking of size, I usually compare knives to other sort of every, everyday sort of well-known objects, but, but today I'm kind of out of ideas for clever, funny things to compare to. So I thought I'd break with my tradition and line up with the more common tradition and compare it to some other knives. Now, the problem is it doesn't really compare well to any of the other knives in this size range. So, you know, for example, I take a knife that is a similar size when closed, like this Benchmade Mini Griptilian. It's almost identical when closed. But if I open them, as you can see, the blade on the Zero Tolerance is noticeably shorter. And that turns out to be the case with most of the knives in my collection. I found one that is a pretty good match. That's this Kaiser Feist. And it's still similar problem. The blade is slightly longer, but it's at least close. So you know, to give you an idea of the size, think Kaiser Feist. A much more accurate comparison would be another slip joint. So take this for example. This is a traditional Swiss Army knife cadet, the uh, Aldenox version. And as you can see, it's pretty much identical. So it does seem to fit the standard ratios in the slip joint class of knives. It is uh, a very lightweight knife, thanks to that carbon fiber body and the fact that there is minimal metal mechanism internally. The drop point blade is 20 CV steel, which is a great steel. It has a sort of a dull gray stone washed finish. The blade runs on washers and it's smooth, but it's not buttery smooth. There's a bit of stickiness or friction when I move it. I don't know if you can hear that. I wasn't sure whether that was intended or whether it indicated that something needed to be serviced. And it was a used knife, so I took it apart, cleaned it, lubricated it, reassembled it carefully, and I still feel that slight friction when moving the blade. So I'm concluding that that is by design. Maybe it's appropriate for a slip joint to have a bit of resistance, since there's nothing else preventing it from closing. Anyway, I like this knife, or, or at least I really want to like this knife. I like the concept of the modern traditional slip joint. It's, uh, it's simple. It's easy to open and close. And unlike the old uh, riveted slip joints, it is completely disassemblable and maintainable, in theory. In practice, it's not that easy to disassemble because the pivot screws are double-sided. So you need to get a driver into each one in order to loosen them. And that's not easy to work from both sides. The knife keeps tipping over or the drivers keep slipping out. You can see I have chipped some of the black paint off the screw with when my uh, drivers slipped out of the holes. Uh, the holes which are small and shallow. I'm going to avoid disassembling this knife again except in absolute need because I imagine a few more disassemblies and those holes will be stripped. The compact size makes it very easy and pleasant to carry for basic cutting functions and I like the appearance a lot. I like the carbon fiber scales, especially that, uh, I'm bringing a light in here, especially that striking uh, woven pattern that is so traditional with carbon fiber. There's a blue anodized uh, backspacer in here, which gives it a nice splash of color. That would be aluminum. I'm pretty sure it's not titanium. I like the shape and the appearance of the blade. And I love the steel. 20 CV is a, a great steel with really good edge retention. It was sharp when I received it. I don't know if what I got was the factory edge because I bought it used, but I think it was. It didn't show any signs of having been sharpened. Just for fun, I ran it through my KME system to bring the edge up to a mirror finish. I think I can make that show. And 
this allows me to confirm that 20 CV is hard to sharpen. With the amount of time I was willing to put into it, it's not a perfect mirror. But it's pretty damn sharp. And the nice thing about the 20 CV is that, uh, barring abuse, the, the edge will last forever. Now, unfortunately, there are some things that I don't like about this knife, and one of them is probably a deal killer. First, I'll mention a couple of things that might seem like complaints, but really aren't legitimate complaints. Uh, one is that it doesn't lock open. Well, the answer, of course, is duh. Uh, that's kind of by definition. It is a non-locking knife, so get over it. The only reason I mention it is I didn't realize what a difference that made and until a time I was breaking down some boxes and this happened to be the knife I was carrying, and I found I was actually worried about the blade closing on me. Locking is a good thing. Uh, the other complaint is that you can't really flick it open. Okay. Now, I, I'm sure that somebody can, and will say, I can flick it open, what's wrong with you? And you probably can flick it open, you know, getting your thumb in that nick, or using two fingers, or getting the meat of your thumb against the blade, or, or something. But I can't, and I'm not really inclined to learn. That would be contrary to the whole point of this design. It's a traditional slip joint, and you open it with two hands. Get over it. Anyway, as I said, those aren't really legitimate complaints. But I do have some legitimate complaints, and here's the first, and the most serious. I feel very strongly that I should not be able to cut myself on a closed knife. And I have cut myself on this knife when it's closed. The problem is that the blade doesn't close quite all the way. How can I show that? How about this? There we are. The blade doesn't close quite far enough to get the tip well down in between the scales. If I don't close it firmly, you can see here it's stopped with the point of the blade still exposed above the scales. If I push it closed firmly, the tip is technically inside the scales now, but it's so close to the edge of the scales that I can get the flesh of my thumb in there and I can cut myself on this knife. In fact, I have done so. There's the scar. Now, since it's a tip-up carry, it's sitting this way in your pocket, and it's quite easy when you're pushing your hand down into your pocket to grab the knife to get the flesh of your thumb in there and nick yourself on the tip of the blade. I think that's unforgivable. There's lots of room in there. There's no reason the blade couldn't close farther and be better protected, but the lock bar prevents it from moving anymore. At first, I wondered if the lock bar was somehow adjustable and if I had set it wrong. That, for example, maybe the lock bar is non-symmetric or had a flat milled into it and it needed to be rotated to give the blade a little more movement to close. So I took it apart again with the hopes of discovering something adjustable. No luck. This is what it does. There are no adjustments. I was able to reduce the threat a little bit by loosening these scale screws and sort of pushing the scales that way to the extent that the play in the screw holes allowed. But it is still at the point where, when completely closed, I can get flesh in there. And if it doesn't close completely, the tip is exposed. That's just unacceptable to me. And the result is that I don't carry this knife as often as I would like to. My other complaint is a minor one. I find the pocket clip to be a little bit too tight. It's not easy to get into my pocket, just to get it over the, the edge of my pants. And so I tend to just kind of drop it into my pocket instead. And then I lose it in my pocket where it's rattling around with the other things. I really want the pocket clip to work. I don't mean that the pocket clip is impossible to use, but it requires a special technique. When putting it in my pocket, I have to get my fingertip under the end of the clip and pull on it to release the tension. Then it will properly clip over the edge of my pocket. It is certainly nice and secure uh, once it's clipped in. I just can't pop it back into my pocket quickly and easily when I'm done. 
no doubt I could bend the clip out, but I'm worried I'd go too far and make it too loose. Plus, the clip is not particularly securely mounted. You can see it's on the inside of the scale. What you can't see is that there's only one screw holding it in place. It's this one here. The other side of the clip flange is just sitting there in a milled recess. So the clip is not particularly secure, and yet it still manages to be so tight that I can barely get it into my pocket. Now, clip tension is not a big deal, but cutting myself on a closed knife is a big deal. Now, let's run through my not in any way famous, internationally unknown knife rating systems. First, my NTGK rating, which is for non-threatening gentleman's knife. Uh, as you will see, I'm going to give it an overall score of a B, which is disappointing because it should have done much better. It was pretty much designed to be a non-threatening gentleman's knife. That's the whole point of a modern slip joint. Uh, under NT for non-threatening, it should have scored an A. With the simple mechanism and the two-handed opening, there's no uh, weirdo with a knife factor at all. But the fact that it's not safe when it's closed is a problem. All I would need is to have someone ask to borrow or handle the knife and then cut themselves on it. There goes the non-threatening rating. So I'm going to give it a, a B plus for non-threatening. For the GK rating, gentleman's knife, again, it should have been an A. It's tiny, it's light, the carbon fiber is classy, but it's hard to pocket. The difficulty of getting the clip over my pocket, and the danger of cutting myself while it's in my pocket, undoes how pocketable it is. So I'm going to give it a B for GK. And the result is that I'm going to give this potentially great knife a B as an NTGK. That's too bad. It really should have been an A+. Now, how about my KN rating? KN is for Knife Nerd. What will my fellow knife nerds think? Uh, again, I'm going to give it a B. Impressing knife nerds is not really the point of this knife. It's nice steel and it has attractive scales. However, uh, there is no mechanism to fidget with, so you don't get any points, nerd points for the mechanism. There's no flicking, so you can't show off and compare your flicking skills. There's no lock, so you don't get to brag about how secure the lock is, or argue whether the lock engagement is 53% or 62%. It has a flimsy clip that is somehow still too tight. So my knife nerd friends would probably say, good try, but no. So I'm giving a B as a knife nerd. In summary, this, this is a really nice concept with good components, and it should be a great little knife. But the flaws mean I seldom carry it. It's a very low threat knife. I like that it's office friendly, great blade, great steel. With no uh, fancy opening mechanism, it may not impress knife nerds, but that's not what it's for. But the fact that it's not safe when closed is a fatal flaw. If I could find a way to fix that, I would probably carry it rather often because I really like everything else about it. But as it is, almost never. Well, that ends this tour of this, a Zero Tolerance 0235 modern slip joint. My first modern slip joint, and probably not my last. Thanks for watching. See you again.